Welcome back to Downstairs and Dragons, where we play D&D in our basements as per tradition. Of course, you know, you can play wherever you want with whoever you want. So let's go see my players who've been playing Lost and Finders with me. We have Dieter playing Kieran, Josh playing Ixeldor, and Adler playing Phlebotomus. You guys are in a city called Star Falls. Um, it's not really a city anymore, it's more of a ruin that once was an elven metropolis. And you're trying to rebuild the mythal by repowering it with its pillars. Um, pillars could be anything, from a being giving constant prayer and dedication and magic to the mythal, to an object being drained for the mythal, to a ritual being completed regularly for the mythal. You just completed the pillar for Solonor, the god of the hunt. And now you're planning on going where? Um, Arnadel? Arnadel, the area for Tarcellus, the god of mountains, springs, and rivers. Um, okay. So to head that way, you guys are going to have quite a steep climb up a lot of different paths and stairs. And by the time you even get there, it's going to be nighttime. So you're going to want to rest until Alicia's 8. Does that sound okay? Is it really going to take us that long to get there? Hmm. Should go to someplace else then. If I could just fly up there, would it take I us? I mean, think about this city is the size of like the city we currently live in. So imagine walking across this city. Mm. You know what I mean? It would take all day. Okay. I'll go with you on your broom, and you go on your stag, and yeah. we should uh, cut down on some travel time. Why don't you both go on the stag, and I go on the broom? Because your broom can carry 500 pounds. Can't the stag carry 500 no. pounds? No. The stag can't fly. Okay, why don't I take the stag and you guys can take my broom? I start riding away. Okay. <laughs> okay, get on. I'll just hang on. <laughs> okay. Uh, you guys head over there. And again, you can get there on nightfall. Um, you stop at what you believe is the first ruined temple of Tersalus, and it looks like there's actually several temples for him along paths up these mountains. Now, um, these mountains aren't the biggest ones you've ever seen, but it's really neat to have a mountain right out the back door of a, of a city. So it's quite large, especially to have snow caps this close. You think it would probably take someone, um quite a while to get up to the top of the mountain, maybe a whole day. And you actually see there are several tops that you could go to. Um, so the three of you could split up and hit all of them. But for now, it's dark, so you come down into the temple, and you have a chance to look around and read about Tarcellus, learn about Tarcellus, and maybe think about what you want to do to reestablish this pillar. Well, I, for one, would love to read all the books I can get my tiny little hands on. Okay, why don't you guys both all roll investigation? Oh, baby, natural one. Well, it is nighttime and it is dark. 19. 12. Okay. Um, Ixlor, you're reading most of the murals and statues again. You're looking for more religious symbolism in your study. And, Kieran, you're actually finding things to actually read to give you more more concrete information. Uh, natural one, you said? Uh, it's dark and you're getting distracted and... Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I just I just sit down while everyone else is doing and I'm just watching them. My, my bees aren't giant anymore, by the way. Um, from what you're seeing, Ixeldor, there's a lot of solitary symbolism. Tarcellus was known for being estranged from the other gods and going off into the wilderness alone. Um, he would wander different planes and planes ultimately not interact with others. Kieran, you're able to find a few different stories. They're basically all the same story, just told in different ways. And there's several different copies on the bookshelves. Tercellus was largely estranged from the other deities, especially Solonor, due to a fight they had a long time ago. Tercellus had a special hatred for Lolf and the Drow, as, as he may have fallen in love with a visage of Lolf. And then when she turned out to be who she was, he felt extremely betrayed. He turned his back on most of society and civilization to wander the mountains 
and the hills, between the rivers and the snow caps. He is the god of snow elves, um, fresh snow springs, um, or fresh snow, fresh springs, and mountain rivers and waterfalls. So with that knowledge, do you guys want to brainstorm what someone would do to appease a god like this? To please him? To earn favor? To grow a mythal? Is there any more information you want to ask about? Any questions you have? How is he honored here? Well, I'm not just going to give you the information. Is there any more information about his life journey into the mountains? Anything special he did up there? Or did he just sort of wander around there? It was mostly just about his solitude. Mm-hmm. All right. <clears throat> I almost want to say that going up onto the mountain for like going to the top of the mountain peak each of us by ourselves and just being very alone and whoever stays up there the longest wins the prize hmm. what you got in your uh, pamphlet um well it talks about you know uh Steep hillsides covered in striped minerals, exposed gems, strong trees. Um, there's some high altitude caves up in the mountains. Hmm. Um, typically inhabited by snow elves. We can check it out. Mm-hmm. What else do we say? Where do you often see worshippers and denizens of the district? Do you encounter worshippers of Tarcellus anywhere? Um, you can encounter people from this district on a pilgrimage to a sacred elf mountain, but that's somewhere across Faerun that I know nothing of. They make pilgrimages. To sacred elven mountains. Is this mountain one of them? Maybe. Um, it's not really a pilgrimage if it only takes you a day to go up there and a day to come back. Well, we don't really have the time to right. go on a pilgrimage across the continent. So is there Actually, any it is a pilgrimage. Like It is. Uh, the distance isn't a, a prerequisite. It's it's the, the ritualistic journeying to a location. The distance doesn't matter. Well, the and distance from the temple to the spire isn't far, but you guys have been, you're not from here. You've already made a big version of this journey. Hmm. Just and to get here. Also, I'm not climbing even from mountain. this plane of existence. Climbing a mountain's kind of a big deal. It is. It's I'm not thinking. difficult. So I'm thinking I should leave the broom, broom down here and walk away. Don't cheat it. That's yeah. a good idea. There are paths up the mountain. There are people that built their homes on the side of this mountain. There's caves, there's mines, there's other things up here. Maybe we can find some snow elf recipes. That might be interesting. I don't know a whole lot about snow elves. I'm going to step out and maybe find a shop that might have some remnant, maybe somewhat disheveled climbing gear. See if any of the patches on that funky robe are climbing gear. Hmm? Oh, great. Um... Oh, uh, yeah, kind of that card. And then roll perception for anyone else looking around for stuff. Eight. I'm gonna aid you. Okay. Eight. F. You kind of randomly determine them. I was gonna have all of these. That's what I was originally planning. But it says 4d4. Well, it's all of those as well as 4d4 ones you choose. Oh. Is that what it says? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what it is. From the Dungeon Masters, page 195. Um, I don't know. Did I already hand you guys the rope of climbing? I don't think you did. Did I accidentally put it back in the pile? You find a rope of climbing. <laughs> Just lying around. You do. It would um, make sense for Tucked away in a, in a very nice box. I'll take a look through the cards. Just pass them all over here. Yeah, that'd be great. The thing is, I'm pretty sure I pulled it out, so I'm wondering if it's just under one of my notebooks or something. Um, rope of climbing. And you find a stone. Uh, 
if you would like to identify it. I'm going to identify that stone. Oh, uh, it went into the middle of the room. No. Well, it's something like that, as we affectionately call it. Oh, where did it go? It landed like over here. Oh my god, there's dice down here. I have a die down there somewhere. Yeah, you guys have all kinds of stuff down here. All sorts of goodies and treasures. Now how do I get out? Carefully. I can't. I'm stuck under the table. <laughs> I can't. I can't get out. Okay. You made it. Here's your die. Here's oh, it. There it is. And then Don't your, throw it. Here's your card. <laughs> I can't. I'm stuck under the table. Oh my god. <laughs> Why? Why? Because it's amused me. <laughs> yeah, okay, alright. I'm stuck. <laughs> this isn't even a. Uh, this isn't a freaking rope of climbing. No, no it's that, my the friend. other thing you found. That isn't. I am stuck. Oh, baby. I am stuck. But it's cracked. Oh. Which means it works half the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, so what were we doing it again? Can someone remind me? Rope of climbing. Oh, yeah, you were looking for ways to get up the mountain. Mm hmm. Okay. I'll just DM from down here. <laughs> you are not on camera. Right here. <laughs> oh, the floor is nice and cold. Okay, I'm here. This just all more good. What the heck? I turned off autofocus. Okay. So. Okay, you guys, so you want to rest here tonight and make the journey in the morning? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, so a, yeah. yeah, I think I think we can make this work. I think All right. you guys have decided to make a pilgrimage to each of the top of these mountains in solitude to try and what? Well, we'll Bond see when we get there. Bond with Tarcellus? I suppose. As maybe as a symbol of appreciation? We're sort of trying to retrace his steps in his own solitude in the mountains. Yeah. Um, well, they would be right here in the stack, so we must have pulled it out somewhere. Yeah, it's somewhere. You guys got a rope of iron, which is also called elven rope. Does anyone else want the iron stone? What to do? It's an iron stone of awareness, so you can't be uh, surprised. Does it require attunement? Yes. What does surprise mean? Does it mean like there's no surprise round in battle, but people can still get really close to you and sneak yes. up on you? Okay. Yes, yeah, that's what it means. I just want to make sure it wasn't overpowered. And I um, you, you take that. Okay, so you guys take a long rest to so make sure you get your spell slots back. Yeah, baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, stop. Oh, At level 10, I can attune up to four items at once. Wow. Yeah. At level 14, I can tune up to 5. At level 18, I can tune up to 6. That's why artificers are the best. Oh, yeah. Okay. You guys take a long rest. I'm going to go ahead and attune to the prayer beads. And uh, I'm just going to put the sign stone in my bag of holding. Okay. Huh. Nom, nom, nom. Nom, nom, nom. All right. Let me get the picture for today. Oh, very nice. You guys are about to go on three separate paths up three separate mountains. And they're going to weave through caves um, and on the edges of cliffs. Let's get you some good music. Nature outside. These all suck. This is fun. Okay. So, part of me is wondering if I should just do one of you at a time. Yeah, do one of us at a time. Or do each one of you take turns? Oh, turns. I, I do, do like that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Should we roll for initiative? Uh-huh. This is you. That's my dice. Your die. Yes. Hint roll the ones you already have. I wanted this one. What'd you guys get? Eight. Twenty-one. Sixteen. Pull bottomus. 
How do you feel about all this elven shit? You're not even an elf, and you're getting pushed through all these fucking hoops. It's kind of, kind of goofy to me. You know, we uh, we gnomes don't really have any of this mythical stuff, any of this wizzly, fizzly connection to nature stuff. We build our own cities with our own smarts. Do you feel like you need to be a part of this? I feel like it's something important to A, my friends, and B, important to this society and to these people. And even if I may not be a part of it, I'm sort of doing it for them, if that makes sense. Okay. If you think about it this way, though not arcane in nature, it is divine magics we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You may be one of the first artifices that may be able to really tap into the divine magics of the world and may be able to learn something new. That is true. All right, so you each three go in separate directions and you feel the dirt road beneath your feet and there's lots of stone that's jutting out in weird places that used to be steps and now you guys have to kind of make your way up. You make your way up to the next shrine. It's just a little gazebo, like a stone gazebo room. Open to the outside winds, um, right up on a cliff, and you can tell the doorway is only wide enough for one person to walk through at a time. And each of you kind of reach yours at different times, but for Bottomus... This hole was made for me. (laughs) (laughs) For Bottomus, you reach the first one, and it's about twice your height. And you walk into this dark little silo-looking room. And on either side of you is polished stone. It's not a mirror, but it is stone polished so smoothly that you can see your reflection. Okay. But it's a little distorted just because it's not a mirror, so your reflection isn't coming back to you as how you would normally look to another person. You're seeing yourself at the youngest moment you can remember. What does Phlebotomus remember about growing up and being a little boy in Kaobunga? He has historically gotten into a lot of trouble. He's been a little rascal from a very early age. So this little young version of him is probably covered in like little, uh, little scraps of candy, little dirt clods, just a whole mess, whatever trouble he's getting into at any given time. Where you would normally see your mother coming to yell at you or clean you up, or your brothers coming to pick you up, tease you, or your father laughing at your shenanigans, you just see you. And you know there's a scene going on in the background, but all you can see in the reflection is you. And you take a while and look at your younger self, and you go to move on to the next part of the journey. Ixeldor, you reach the tower, the gazebo, and you step through the open archway that you fit in perfectly, and you walk into a small, dark room with smooth stone. The little bit of light coming through the arch is bouncing off that stone and reflecting your image back at you, but you're not seeing the fully plate armored Ixeldor. You're seeing a young, short, lanky, goofy half-elf. What was Ixeldor like when he was a child? What was it like? Not much different than he was now, much less angry. Um, while living in Mithranor, he was quite content. Um, I'd probably see him as a young acolyte, someone that's just learning the ropes and what it means to uh, be someone, a man of the cloth. Um, the stone uh, on the walls reminds you much of the stone that Mithranor was built of. And the glow on young Ixador's face looks like that of a sunny surface Mithran. But you can't see the city around him, you can only see him. As much as you might long to see Mithran or built again, even in this memory you do not see it. You only see yourself. Mm. And when you're able to get past the longing to see Mithran or, and you're able to accept that only you are in this memory, you can move on. Kieran, you come to the first 
power. And you fill that hole perfectly. <laughs> Thank you, Junji Ito. <laughs> <laughs> and you come into this dark room with shining stone like ice, like smooth glaciers that you were used to as a child. And you see in the reflection a blue Aladrin boy, a young version of Kieran. What was Kieran like as a little one? Well, no one's ever really asked me this, so I haven't really expounded upon it, but the mountain that Kieran grew up on serves a purpose. You see, the Fate Wild is strange and magnificent and absolutely beautiful as it is, is still a dangerous place. In one night, some strange wild beast took his brother and sister away, hunted them, killed them. The loss was devastating for our family, and so we made our own pilgrimage to the mountain. The purpose of the mountain, climbing the mountain, is going through grief, accepting it, and letting it go. At the end, or rather at the top, you find yourself. You, you do not climb the mountain. You just live on it. And the more you come to accept and heal, the further up you find yourself. Until you've accepted. Whatever this wound is in your heart, once you've healed from it, then you leave the mountain. You do not have a choice. It just is. Now, as much of that memory had a mountain, it had your family, it had a beast, and before the beast, your brother and sister. You don't see any of that in this reflection. You see a boy who experienced that. You mm. see a boy who feels that. And as you look, at the pained child you once were. When you're ready to leave that boy alone, leave him in his reflection, you can move on to the next part. Well, I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't left the boy that was wounded and scared a long time ago. It simply is already a part of my past. Uh, I haven't really reflected on it, but... Hey, it's part of my uh, beginnings, part of what became me. So I'll take a look, understand where I came from, and leave it behind me. Phlebotomus, this next leg of the journey... It seems like every step is too big for you, like you're a child again. Like every part you have to climb is much too steep. Or, you know, like a gnome going through a human city. <laughs> I'd like you to roll athletics to climb your way up this leg of the mountain. Wait, who's got the rope of climbing? Uh, you do. Okay, I'll take it. I've got guidance on myself mm -hmm. to climb on up. Seven or a natural one? I think it was a natural one. It could have been a seven, I'm not sure. Sure, Josh. Really? Well, it landed here, but not when I picked it up, it wasn't sure if I picked it up from there or there. But oh, so. Let's roll with a natural one. Okay, let me think about this. How would a child mess up climbing a mountain? Mrs. Footing. Footing. Yeah. But if it's actual steps? It's crooked steps and broken steps. Yeah, get scared maybe. Um, you are going to slip and fall. And you're going to slide all the way back to that room. And it's going to look like the mountain's even bigger, even taller than it was the last time. And you're realizing you feel completely intimidated by this experience that you've never encountered before, 
and now you have to get over it. So now I want you to roll, what would be bravery? One second. Like a charisma save or something? One second. Um, if you're rolling to be brave, wisdom saving throw. Okay. One second. The Ring of Spell Storing still has Exodor's heroism spell. Ooh. It also has fly in it. I'm going to cast heroism on myself, expending that. And that imbues me with bravery. I'm immune to being frightened, and I have temporary hit points equal to Exodor's spell casting ability modifier. Four. Okay, so four temporary HP. What does Ixl- or what does Phlebotomus tell himself to be brave? How does he get through scary moments? I've gotten this far, and people are counting on me, so I just have to do it. It doesn't matter if I'm terrified, I just have to do it. So you feel the stone under your hands as you're able to get a solid grip. You're able to, one at a time, climb these stairs that are much too large for you and make your way up to the next tower. When you get to this tower, you're exhausted and tired, but you you feel like you finally did it. You've waited all this time and you've looked up at this tower and you're here. When you get in, a reflection catches your eye of young adult phlebotomus. This is the phlebotomist that is no longer a child and is ready to take on adulthood. What was it that you were expecting out of being an adult? What was it that you were looking for? Your parents wanted you to be a doctor in the clinic. Your brothers were doctors in the clinic. Your village wanted something out of you. What did you want for yourself? To be honest, I don't think even I knew at that point. It's a very tumultuous time to be being tossed from having no responsibilities to suddenly having all sorts of expectations and all sorts of responsibilities. So I think what I wanted to do was find something that interested me, something that I could make, make work. And artifice is that thing for me. What you're seeing is the phlebotomist before that decision was made. That lost and confused gnome who wasn't sure what to do to be important to himself. And you take time to look at this confused and lost young adult before moving on to the next part. Ixeldor, you leave the first tower to find yourself on a very winding path. Very small cliff path that you have to be careful on. It almost feels like this path is way too small for you. And you have to somehow fit on it. Roll acrobatics. Okay. Before attempting that, I'm also going to use the rope of climbing just to anchor myself. So I will tell it to move up. It can hold 3,000 pounds, so I'll grab hold of it and start shimmying. Okay. I guess roll to hit. And then we'll see if you can grab one. Um, no. Yeah, just roll it. It'll be a low DC. Just an acrobatic strip? No, roll the hit with your lasso. With oh. your rope climbing. Oh, Twelve? Yeah, okay. You're able to find something to anchor on, and then please roll acrobatics. And avenge. Seventeen. Okay. Holding onto the rope, you are able to very carefully tiptoe with your chest against the cliff face. Tiptoe along this path up to the next tower where the path finally opens up and you're able to pull your rope down, get it back, and walk into the next tower, which is another dark room. You walk into the archway and you see the sun reflecting off the stone. You see an image of Ixeldor as a young adult. What? Ixeldor had gone through a lot to get to the point of being an adult. And what was Ixeldor going through at that time? Mm. I don't know. 
Miss Drenor had fallen at that time, so his family would have moved into the caverns of Semberholm. At that point, either right before he became a young adult, or slowly, or, or shortly right after, he would have gone through something very traumatic for him. Um, okay, you don't have to share it, but you see it in Exeldor very shadowed, very dark. It is not in a place of very much light and looks kind of pale and unhappy. And you see this this young adult who has to look forward to how many more years of life and how many more years of adulthood who has already seen so much despair and sadness. How can there be anything to look forward to if it's just going to repeat itself over and over? You see this, um, I want to say, downtrodden, disheartened, angry. You don't see your family around you, even if they were there. You don't see the caves that you know he's in. You just see Ixeldor standing there in the darkness. And you dwell on this a little while before you move on. Kieran. You get to a part of the path that looks like it's not meant to be tread at all. Oh, well, uh, Mulder's. <laughs> <laughs> it does not budge. No, 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 no. Come on. It, let's let's cooperate here. As you do that, more rocks and gravel seem to slide. And you're going to cause an avalanche. It is a very steep incline that you have to try and make yourself across to the next tower. Mm, mm, mm. Let's see here. It's a steep incline. And it seems to be like a valley, so there's a steep incline here, but then it meets with another mountain and there's a steep incline here. So you're going to be leaning to the left, to the right, to the left. You eventually can get to the tower that you see between the two mountain sides. Well, then I'll use a wild shape and turn into a goat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now the rocks are still slippery under the weight, so the goat can stand on small rocks, mm. but finding a sure footing is hard. Roll survival. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 25. <laughs> <laughs> you do feel rocks slip under your feet, but the moment they slip, you find and you just keep pressing until you find a solid one and you keep going. And it's just a goat going one leg at a time, not jumping, not running, just one leg at a time and looking around with its eyes and nose and horns. And eventually, after making almost like a twinkling music of gravel as it goes, eventually makes it to the dark tower. You walk in. Still a goat. Still a goat. And in the reflection, well, you know there should be a goat in the reflection. You know that what you're seeing is Kieran as a young adult. Before he's ready to take on the world, after he's already gone through all of his childhood in the mountain. What is Ixeldor going through when he's almost an adult? Or, no, Ixeldor. He's a niche over here. Come on. <laughs> uh, what's he going through as a young adult? Yes. Off the mountain? Was he off the mountain at that point? You're a 300 now. Adult. I thought you didn't come off the mountain until you were like 250. It's 270. Well... <coughs> So, I didn't come off of the mountain and then immediately go into the prime material plane. Okay. I came off of the mountain. Um, uh, in adulthood or no? Uh, just young adult, adult, adulthood. When I was... My, my parents are still there. They'll never leave. You're looking at a hundred-year-old. Great. Kieran, great, was he great. off the mountain or not? 
Yes. Okay. Right. Video Kieran is now off the mountain. Right. When when what he. What color were you? Um. I would still have been blue. Are you living as an out, outlander? Like, yes, yes. Okay. Um, living as an outlander. Um, Do you have any goals or plans for yourself? Just to see what there is out there. Um, I had grown and healed from the loss of my siblings, said goodbye to my parents, and was ready to be off out in the wilds on my own. But there was trepidation. Feywild. Strange and dangerous place. So, carefully. Eyes growing wider with wonderment. Learning that there is more to life than... than rock moss. And ice and snow. And occasionally pushing each other off the mountain. Snow elves, not not the living kind, but kind the, the kinds that you make, the snow people elves. Mm-hmm. Um, ice sculptures, that was fun. So you're seeing a Kieran who is in a transition of his life, leaving something that he was comfortable with, loved, but accepted leaving, mm-hmm. and finding new things that he loved. Aye. And while you don't see all the things he was seeing, and you don't see all the people he was encountering, you do see Kieran, a young adult, alone. And then you're ready to move on to the next part. It's Lobotomus. Leaving this dark tower, you just find yourself at the mouth of a cave. This is a natural cave with stalactites and stalagmites and dripping sounds and bat calls and sharp jagged rocks and slippery rocks and you're about to go through this darkness just as phlebotomist didn't know where he was really going to be going when he was young you're about to travel into the unknown roll what would someone roll to go through a dark cave that they can't can't see yeah survival perception i would would also take perception Mm. it's the same idea Okay. I'll use guidance and what the hell? Another natural one. This is a plus di- two. This is a different set of dice. Yeah, it's a natural one plus two. Okay. Look, you, you look what that. it landed on. Though. I don't want to look. No, I'm you not. have to look. Well, tell me. Yeah, I cannot see. It's a natural one. So even when someone rolls <laughs> yeah, up so for I shouldn't you, roll that one. I'm not touching it. So when someone <laughs> rolls for you. You get an actual one. See, you got to use the dice cup and the dice tower. Try it now. You have to separate yourself from the dice. No, no, no. No, no, no. Dice cup. Put it in the cup and then roll it into the tower. Aye. What'd you get? Four. (laughs) Not a one. It's not a one. Okay. It's a four. Phlebotomist who cannot see in front of him runs. Straight forward. <laughs> yeah, you're not scared. You have heroism. You <laughs> smash into so many rocks. You just like bam, not that way. Bam, not that way. Bam, not that way. And you're just trying. You're getting bruised and blistered, and you feel little cuts all over from the rocks. And it feels like there was lime on some of them and salt and some others, and it just stings all over. It's like a horizontal pachinko. And you had to work so much harder to get through that cave than you think someone else would have had to. That you come out exhausted. You see the light. You come out. And you see the next tower. And battered, you limp your way into the next tower. And you see your dumb reflection of someone who just ran into a hundred rocks. And it slowly... Changes into someone who looks just as battered and just as exhausted. Someone who's put in so much time to learning their craft. What do you think of the phlebotomist who had just barely started to accomplish his first creation in Artificery? Um, What did phlebotomist think of himself as he was learning more and more? Was it good? It felt good to actually have something to strive for instead of just a base sort of all over the placeness of youth. 
to have an actual goal in mind and to be able to move ahead. Do you remember having people around you during that time in your life? The biggest thing I remember is the work, more so than the people. There were people, for sure. Any that meant anything to you? Quite a few. Um, oh. This, this would be when I was training under Daylon, so definitely him, as well as the other students. What about Mufi, who you grew up with? Yeah, I definitely would have been her. And Corfor, and Cherish, and the other one I can't remember his name. You don't see any of them in this reflection. Phlebotomus is all alone in his accomplishments. That's him standing there having put in effort and put in time and put in work to get where he was. It's all him. And it's all you see. You don't see the others. You just see Phlebotomus and the work he did. When you're ready to move on, you can move on to the next one. I'm probably going to sit there a bit to uh, build my strength back up before I move on to the next one. Yeah. Ixeldor. Coming out of the last tower, where there was an angry, sad, and upset, grieving Ixeldor, you come out to a dark cave face. You know you're about to go into an area so dark that even your elven heritage isn't going to help you through it. Just as young Ixeldor went through darkness of his own. What would you like to roll to get through this? How would you get through a cave like this? Mm, no light. Definitely not the most ideal situation. But I suppose the best way to do it is to just take it one step at a time. So I'll take the halberd out and just use the back end of it to kind of guide myself, kind of like a walking stick, um, and just make sure I don't bump into anything. Do you want to do acrobatics then? Because you're being dexterous and you're being careful. Oh, sure. Uh, 17. Okay. You are able to feel when you're about to run into something and you don't cut yourself on your own halberd. And, I mean... You've never really had a situation like this where you're completely blind for an extended period of time. And you keep opening your eyes to see if there's light ahead, and there's none. So you close your eyes and concentrate, and you realize it's just you. It's just you and your things in darkness. There's rocks around you, but you can't see them. So it's really like, do they exist? Only Ixeldor exists, and only the sensation he feels exists. You make your way through the cave, and eventually you see light coming through, and you peek, and you're able to find your way to the end. And you see that there is light, but is there, or is it just something Ixeldor sees? And there's another tower for Ixeldor to walk to. So you go into this dark room, and ready yourself for another reflection. After Ixeldor went through his time of darkness, what was it that was the light for him? What was it that was a destination, a goal, or a dream? His faith, really. He had, well, it was only really uh, something that helped guide him when he was a child. He really buckled down with it after his traumatic event. That one thing that really, no one could really take from him. Um, and with the new situation, Martial training became much more relevant than it was while living in Mistrano. So instead of becoming a cleric or a priest, um, as many other, or even a druid really, um, as many other followers of Rilfing did, he decided to become a paladin to focus on that martial training. So it's interesting, you look and you see an Ixeldor that is by himself is stronger, healthier, taller, muscular. Um, it looks like someone who spent a lot of time on themselves, put a lot of time into their craft and into their interests. And while there might have been other people on the sidelines while you did that, you don't see them here now. Were they ever there? Oh, sure. Was, did Ixeldor spend enough time with them? 
Or maybe he really did, but right now all you're able to see is just Ixodor. It makes you think about the people who were there for you. Who was it? Who do you remember? Who cared? Who do you care about? Mom and Dad. They were very supportive. Um, And my sister. And just thinking about that whole situation um, is painful in and of itself. Um, There was someone that he met in the cavern, someone native to the area, someone that grew up there. Didn't really fit in with the rest. Very much an outcast. But he knew that she wasn't a bad person. In fact, or on more than one occasion, even saved his life. So there was definitely people that had protected him when he wasn't at his strongest. And he didn't want to let those people down, so he in turn became stronger for them. So ultimately what you're seeing before you is what came of that person who had those relationships. But unfortunately you can't see those people, just yourself, before you move on to the next part. Kieran, yeah. you also find yourself faced with a dark cave. You've been very comfortable so far every time you had to encounter something new. You, at a young age, were ready to go off on your own and adventure. And now you currently are faced with a dark, a darkness that you can't see through and will be completely new. How will you go through it? I'll walk into the darkness and I'll, uh, I'll just take a seat, just sit down, listen for a bit. I want to know what kind of animals are uh, living in here. Just gonna listen. Well, perception. Sixteen. Near the mouth of the cave, you can hear swallows that have built their spit nests where they keep their babies. And deeper into the cave, you think you can hear some bats um, fluttering around and holding their babies up against the ceiling. For the most part, that's all you hear. Then there's some squeaks of rats and mice near the bases. We're just wa- mo- making their way through. That's about it. All right, I'll use another wild shape to transform into a rat. Um, as the rat, you have a good sense of feeling with your whiskers in front of you and a good sense of smell. Would you like to make the way your way through the cave that way? And I... smell the rat trails where other rats have walked? I would. You're able to weave yourself. Um, you're in a cloud. You're in complete darkness with just yourself, but it's almost like there's an aura around your face that you're following, like you're in a, a current, a tunnel of scent. And you're able to weave through and make your way to the light, which you have to blink at quite a lot with your dark red eyes. But a little rat eventually comes out. Um, into the sun and makes its way into a very, very, very large tower. And the little rat goes in and where there should be a little rat reflection. You think you see in the curves and the shapes of the minerals and the stone. You think you see a Kieran who had went on his adventures and explored the Feywild. And what did Kieran find? Kieran found that many of the uh, more intelligent and more fantastical entities, they live philosophies. They live perspectives, riddles. Uh, They're very much in love with their own sort of uh, facet of intelligence, uh, personalities. Um, contradictions. They live to spread that perspective to others and to watch as these concepts which they're acting out interact with other concepts and um, perspectives, philosophies. 
Did and Kieran do the same thing? He 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 did. He uh, emulated, made friends with certain individuals, did followed he, them around. Did he push his own philosophy on others? Well, see, that's the thing. It's it's less pushing. Like there's there's an unspoken understanding that you're not trying to force others to be like you. You're just seeing how concepts interact with each other. Oh. And so that's how he was introduced to the world. Through all these different perspectives. And who who was around him at that time? Oh, all he kinds had come of people. To be himself, who did he care about? Ah, well, to learn who to care about. He's, he just loved meeting interesting new people, passionate new people. He'd never really make any lasting friendships, but he would make lasting impressions. This would be around the age that you had someone born. Mm. It was in that time that uh, eventually I came across someone who had a more shall we say, less transient personality. Someone a bit more solid, less ephemeral. Uh, but at the same time, just as sure of who she was as everyone else. And that was when I met Amalada. Now you don't see her in this reflection, but you can tell that this was a time in your life when she was around. Mm. And as much as you wish that you could see her, she's not there. As much as you wish you could see all the other friends you made, it's just Kieran standing there. The Kieran who had all of these connections. Or was it just him experiencing the world? Oh. It was mostly him experiencing... Well, actually it was a bit of both. He was experiencing the world but also the world personified. Yeah. When you're ready to move on, you can take the next section of the journey. Mm-hmm. I'll, uh... reflect on a few fond, sweet memories I have of the Molotov. Oh, okay. What were you thinking? I thought you were gonna have some private time in the tower. I'm reflecting, <laughs> you pervert! <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter, you, you trash bandit. Wouldn't want to. <laughs> anyway, it's very cold up there. <laughs> it is getting more frigid, actually. Speaking of which, Lovonimus, you've been resting. And you think you're ready to make it out into the howling wind that you hear beyond the tower. Mm. This next part of the journey is going to be colder. It's just more mountain climbing. But you can tell there's sections of snow you'll have to tread through, slippery rocks you have to be careful to climb over. And looking down, there's quite a distance between you and where you came. What would you use to help yourself up to the top of the mountain? Sure. We are almost done here in the last leg, I promise. If before I was feeling a little small and a little weak, I think what I'm gonna do is use my knowledge that I've developed, use my intellect to cast enlarge on myself and make myself big. Okay. And once that's done, and I'm big and burly and strong, I'm going to go ahead and push up my shoulders, push up my sleeves, rather, and start climbing up. (laughs) 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 I ho, I ho, it's after work we go. Oh, those are dwarves, I'm sorry. So you, Phlebotomus, are the most of yourself ever. 
built up of yourself many times over to the point of being a bigger version of yourself. You climb this mountain very successfully, I think. Uh, yeah, just roll athletics with advantage. It's already with advantage on strength checks. Okay. Double advantage. Double. Double. Well, no, I meant the advantage because of the enlarged. So just well, do Lord regular. knows I need double advantage, so. Just do regular advantage. I lowered the DC. So I just got a two, and now it's an eight, and seven is my, uh, is what it would be with my strength. Okay. So. Your hands are frigid. And snow keeps getting in your ankles, you know, when that happens in winter. Oh, I yeah, hate I hate that. that. <laughs> um, and in your wrists and your sleeves, and it's in your collar, on the back of your neck. And you're making it, you're going, you just wish your face was a bit warmer with that beard you miss so much. Oh. And um, it takes you quite a while, the rest of the day, to get up to the top of this stupid mountain. You think you went around it a couple times and took a detour that you thought was going to be easier, and it you're up there at sunset, but it's gorgeous. There is beautiful sunset rays bouncing off the snow all around you, but the wind is biting at your skin in the dark. And you see one last tower appear on the top of the mountain that you trudge over to, and this tower actually is a bit bigger. It seems to have a real shelter for someone to stay in up here. But you go into the archway and see your reflection in the stone. And you see yourself. Even in large, you see yourself. The phlebotomist who's here today, and you just see him. Who has he left behind? Who is missing? Who do you feel is missing? What hole is being left empty? The obvious one is Daylander dead. That's why I'm wearing the hat. Um, there's my friends who I've lost touch with. And there's my family back in Kawabunga who I've left to go on this sort of bizarre adventure with the rest of my friends. Why did you do it? Because we all have things we've lost come this far. What have you lost? A very close friend of mine. And what did Phlebotomus gain that was just for himself? A son. <laughs> Not another being. A belt. <laughs> <laughs> you gained many items. And while you have lost a person and left several persons behind, you have items and you have yourself. Up on this mountain, you see the dark shelter around the corner has a fire pit and a stone bed with straw. And you find it very inviting as you are exhausted and it is the end of the day with nowhere to go. I'm going to go to sleep here. Before I do, I'm going to go out and I'm going to see if I can see Kawabunga from here. Yeah, roll perception. Guidance. You can't see Kaobunga itself, but you can see where the Cloven Mountains are, and you know that along the Cloven Mountains to the base is Kaobunga. So you know it's there, and you realize the great distance between you and it, and how alone you are up on this mountain. You look around, there's nothing else. Thank you. And you're turning for the night. Yeah. To sleep alone in an empty room on a mountain. Ixeldor, you have just been looking at a version of yourself that was stronger and ready to move on in life, ready to go out. When you leave the tower and come to a very snowy, rocky, jagged part of your journey, how are you going to climb the rest of the mountain? 
in the snow and the wind and the cold. I'm going to take the rope of climbing. I'm going to tell it to go up. Can and you I'm do gonna, that? Do yep. Do, okay. It just moves 10 feet around. Oh, I didn't know that. <clears throat> yep. And I'm just going to climb the rope. You're just going to climb straight up? Yep. Okay. Um, you do have to kind of re-change your direction every once in a while to get to the top of the mountain. And you do think it cuts some time off of your journey. And you see that you're crossing over rivers and you're being splashed by mists of waterfall. And you feel it freeze on your skin. And your face is chapped from the wind as you're totally exposed up here on the rope. You finally make it kind of to where it starts leveling off and you climb up to the top of the mountain. Climbing a rope is still athletics, I think. You still have to pull up your own weight. Yes. Can you roll sides for me? Sure. 12. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you pull yourself up. um, And the snow, it almost feels better than the wind, because at least it's wet and at least it's solid. But you, it like, your skin burns. It hurts. It's so Mm. cracked and dry. And you see the last tower and you see the sun setting off in the distance on this mountain. You see below you a ruined city, much like the ruined city you came from. And you see a new destination, leaving the ruined city behind. Do you head into the tower? Yeah. You head into the tower and you see a reflection of yourself, Ixeldor, who you are now. The Ixeldor that has traveled very far and left people behind. Who have you left behind? Everyone he's ever known. His entire family. All of his friends. But he's left for a good reason. He wants better not only for himself, but for the people that he left behind. It's the whole reason that he's here. Did he do any of it for himself? Oh, sure he did. What reason? What did he do for himself? He was bored. He was bored staying in a hole in the ground year after year while nothing was done to try to find a better place. A better place to live. So he decided to do it himself because he deserves better. And what did he gain? from leaving everyone behind. He went from city to city to city looking for elven ruins, and it took until now to finally find them. What did he gain? He's gained so much, much more than he would, than he would have by staying in the north. He's gained new companions, New people that are there to look out for him. New experiences. New memories. But most of all, he's found... He's found... Self-reflection. The things that he looked back on. And every time he did, he he was seething with rage. Or beating himself up about whatever. He's gained an understanding that those things aren't going to go away, but the way that he's been dealing with them has not been healthy. And he knows that now. So I suppose the most important thing that he's gained is the ability to become a better person. You look at the Ixeldor that you are now, and he looks back at you. And after lots of time, staring into each other's eyes, you realize that there's a door to go into an empty room with a stone bed, a straw on top, and a fireplace. Would you like to sleep up here for the night? Yes. It has been an exhausting journey. You go into a room all alone to sleep all alone. Kieran, mm. you just saw the Ixeldor, or the Kieran, damn it, 
second time. I know. Oh. Kieran doesn't roll off my tongue. Kieran, I think it's too. It needs more syllables. Kieran Kieran Argyle Flanagan, thank you very much. Kieran Argyle Flanagan, you are just looking at a reflection of yourself during a time of your life that was very full and had a lot. But it was also a time right before there was a lot of change. When you head out of this tower, you're looking at a very different new journey to make on your own. Through snow and rocks and wind and ice. Hmm. How are you going to make this part of the journey? Well, first I'm going to cast Flame Shield. You are still a rat, by the way. Oh, then I will change okay. back into a human. And I will cast Fire Shield using the Warm Shield version of the spell, which will protect me from the cold. Okay, so it's going to be just like a normal hike without I, the cold. Okay. That's right. What would you roll to go up this mountain? So... To go up the mountain, I'm, th I'm thinking I'm going to use that heat from that spell to melt away through the ice. Um, also, I've got a nice big stick, so I'll use that to help me hike up. You're all survival then? Oh, sure. Twenty-two. Oh yeah, absolutely, you'd be fine. Um, it still takes you a while to go up the winding path and melt the snow, but every time you do it, you're making yourself a very safe, clear way. So it takes more time, but it's very deliberate. Mm -hmm. You eventually make your way up to the top of the mountain at sunset, and you've melted yourself a path with glimmering water all around you that is just bouncing off these red and orange sun rays. Mm -hmm. You climb up into the snow on the top of the mountain. And you can see the world. And while it's not as fantastical as the Feywild, you think that you've not been giving it enough credit for how beautiful it is in this moment. Uh, you can find a few places of beauty in this world, I suppose. Still really drab. You're back up on a snowy mountain, like you were as a child. And there's a tower waiting for you. Hmm. You enter it. Well, I entered the other ones, I might as well enter this one. You enter this one and you see a reflection of yourself, Kieran Argyle Flanagan. Wreathed in of, wispy flames. A reflection of who you are now. Who have you lost? Well, I, I lost... I lost... The Feywild. I lost... Uh, my parents, they'll never recover. That's what you left behind. Right. You asked me who I lost. Yeah. So, yeah. There, I lost a Molotov. She was just gone one day. Getting dumped really does kind of stink. Why did you leave? Uh, well, there's a big glowing circle. And uh, I, I wanted to see what that was about, so I, I stepped through it and every place was ugly, so I wanted to see how funny it would be. What did you get out of it? Remarkably strong self-confidence. I am incredibly beautiful and vibrant compared to the strange mortals in this place. <laughs> <laughs> that is what you've gained? Oh, I also learned how to be a druid. Do you see yourself as stronger and accomplished? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Do you look lonely? There are times I'll think back and wonder if something got a Molotov. I spent a good long time looking for her. Never really saw a sign of any struggle. But the Feywild does weird things, so maybe she went through the same door I went through. It truly was the last place I uh, had left to look. I figured, you know, we had gotten quite close. Yeah, maybe it was a little tough for her to say goodbye. Or maybe she couldn't say goodbye. Or maybe she was never there at all. Feywild's a strange place. Maybe it was making me loony. The more you think about her, the more you find your mind actually being brought to just yourself. And you can only be alone. 
The more you think about her being gone, the more you think about Kieran. Uh, hey, oh, no. hey. Stop that. <laughs> Kieran, you're up on a mountain all alone. That, hey, stop that. And an empty hey. No, no, no. La, 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 la. <laughs> Beautiful dryad girls! The only way to get the thoughts out of your head is to go to sleep in the empty room. No, the, how did I get in here? <laughs> All of you sleep a very windy night. You hear the howling. And while you do sleep well, being who you are, being alone, when you wake up, you kind of have to re-remember your whole life. What? Sorry, that, that exchange is hilarious. <laughs> you wake up in the morning and you kind of have to remind yourself who you are. So tell me, Phlebotomus, who are you? I am Phlebotomus Grumblekin. I'm an artificer from Kawabunga. I am a genius I am a visionary. <laughs> I am a loving father. <laughs> I am a friend. I am honest, steadfast, and true. And I will be the one to save Feyrun. Don't forget humble. Humble too. I am exceptionally humble. <laughs> <laughs> Ixlador, you wake up and have to remember your entire life. Remember all of those journeys and all those paths all the way up until you realize what, what you're doing on this mountain. You have to remember who you are. So who are you, Ixildor? I am Ixildor Morthorn, Paladin Oath of the Ancients, holding to Relifane, Relithil. I'm stronger than I once was. I have purpose. I know where I belong. And I have a job to do. And my journey is not yet over. Kieran, you wake up and you have to re-remember your entire life. No, um, five more minutes. All the weirdness slaps you in the face Whoa. so fast, over and over again. All the things. <laughs> All right, I'm getting up. <laughs> oh. And you have to remember who you are. Who is this person sitting in here? Who are I... you, Kieran? I'm just a city boy, <laughs> born and raised in South Detroit. It took the midnight train going anywhere. <laughs> Who are you? I am someone who refuses to take anything seriously. <laughs> Don't you fucking remember? Uh, forget, re forget, <laughs> memory. As you guys sit in the beds. In each one of your doorways. Is Don't you fucking forget you, you bloody tower. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave. Standing in the doorways on the way out is the figure of an older woman, cloaked. Um, you can't really discern what color her hair is, what color her skin is, but she's elven. It just looks like a shadow silhouette in the doorway. Uh, like a transparent figure. Ghost! And she looks <laughs> at you in your eyes. I'm talking to all three of you because she's in front of all three of you at the same time. And her eyes don't have color. She does have irises. She has a line and an iris and a pupil. It's just black and white. And she makes eye contact with you and holds your gaze. I am oftentimes alone in who I am. So thank you for taking the time to show me who you are and letting me get to know you. You were a bit forceful with that. It helps me. Hello? Can you see me? Become <laughs> stronger in my solitude. <laughs> and she fades away with the snowy wind. Well. <clears throat> Ghostbuster extraordinaire now. Right. That's right. That's Scared you away, didn't I? Tell me, what are you guys returning to when you leave this mountain? Up. Uh, uh, that, that place. My two stalwart companions, without whom I would also be lost. 
the base of the mountain. That's where I'm going. Okay. No, that's fair. That's a good answer. That's, that's what what are you returning going. to, Exelor? Well, from the bottom, it took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> okay. But that. What about Eto de Seldarine? What is it to you? A new home. You guys make your journeys back down, and it does take you an entire day to get back. I okay. use my broom. No, I cast Featherfall. It is part <laughs> of the ritual to finish the journey back. So you jump off the mountainside and get smacked with an invisible wall. Yeah, I go to jump off the mountain, but then I stop. Just, she's there. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, God. get back down on the path. <laughs> okay, Grandma. <laughs> We're just going to start calling her Granny Biffle. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's cute! She is getting younger and younger every time you guys see her. That's not going to stop us. No, so is she doesn't like have a milf to. Miffle now? No. I'm, I'm going to <laughs> shave the dips at the top minute. of the mountain to be Miffle? a giant <laughs> pair of dress. Well, the wind will blow it away, but sure, that's fine. But then they go to her. There, new dentures made of dirt. For the mountain, Grandma. <laughs> you guys make your way back down, and now we can end the episode as you guys prepare yourselves. It's funny, Ipsildor, you remember your friends so fondly after two days without them. It's like you've totally forgotten all the fucking bullshit they're about to put you through. <laughs> and when you hear their voices, you are reminded. <laughs> oh. <sighs> These two. We're just going on about MILFs immediately. <laughs> I'm going to slide through the last bit of the mountain using mold earth and just like posing. You just run into each other's arms. Mm. <laughs> I'm no, just... I'm, sl- I'm sliding in on my on my uh, hip and on my elbow, just like pushing myself with mold earth. <sighs> and I myself cast enlarge on myself again. Just for effect, to stomp down. Boom! Boom! Oh look, you're as tall as us now. Fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of elven men. I look down at him because he's still not quite as tall as I am. I am now... 1.5 is technically plural, so... My macro phlebotomist. (laughs) Beware, my might. Is that what you call your little... Bits of tackle. The, mac- the macro phlebotomist. No, that is phlebotomist senior. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one you call daddy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't end the episode on that. <laughs> You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to. What? <laughs> how, how many minutes are we in? It's time. It's an hour and twenty minutes. All right, it's time. So that was quite the emotional <sighs> journey. I hope we got to know our characters a whole lot better. Do you guys feel more connected to your characters after that? I would say so. Mm. Thank you for letting us have a peek into your minds as you play your characters. So we will see you guys next time when we play D&D in our basement. So, see you downstairs. <laughs>